Hey guys, today we're going to find something truly spectacular. We're going to find the musical instrument used by Lord Shiva. And this is supposed to be 10,000 years old. And this is going to be one of a kind. And you can see, we are in the middle of nowhere. But we are going to find this instrument today. This place is called Kanchanagiri in South India. And this is the place where Lord Shiva has his musical instrument. It's somewhere over here. And it's my job to find it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, so this is the musical instrument of Shiva, and it's 10,000 years old. And you may say, well, we did not have metals 10,000 years ago. I mean, human beings did not use metals 10,000 years ago. Well. They did not use metals to create this instrument. We don't know how this was created or if it's a natural formation. You don't need a metal to strike this. I can simply use another stone. See, see the reverberation and for example, if we don't touch the stone, we can, you can still hear it like a tuning fork. And let me, let me try this. You see, there is no sound coming from this now, right? There's no sound. But if I put this on top of this, You see how it's basically taking the musical property of this onto this. Now this is a very strange phenomenon. So I got the hammer when I heard about this Shiva's musical instruments. I got a few drumsticks, you know, to play it as a drum. So you may wonder why I'm standing in this really awkward position out of breath. Because it's just impossible to access it. You cannot take your vehicle, whether it's a car or a motorcycle. You cannot even walk. You basically have to do rock climbing to get up and see this Shiva's instrument. And of course, it's, it's totally worth it if you get up. But if it's not for the physically weak. And locals say something very important. On top of this rock, you cannot see a plant. You cannot see an ant crawling. You cannot see insects. At night times, no animal will walk on this because this rock supposedly emits a strange energy. And we're going to find out if there is a strange energy coming out of this rock. We have something called a ghost meter. We will use the gadget to see if this emits some kind of energy. And there's something else that is really strange about this. They say that if we keep tapping this rock for a certain amount of time with the exact number of people, the rest of the rocks around this rock will become soft as clay. And this is the procedure that ancient builders used. They basically used the sound of these rocks to create very soft 
material from rock. And this is why these amazing megalithic structures were built. And once we stop tapping on this rock, now whatever was as soft as clay will slowly harden and become a regular rock. Is it possible that such a technology exists? I mean, look at our civilization. We have these amazing buildings, you know, these enormous structures. Why did we get this advanced? Because we are capable of using electrical energy. At some point in time, we started to harness electric energy. But how did these amazing megalithic structures get built in ancient times? Did ancient people harness sound energy? The name of this rock, as you can see here, there is this faint blue paint over there. It says Manipare in Tamil, which basically means a bell rock or a rock bell. That's what it means. And of course, it's obvious why this is the bell rock, because it basically creates a ringing sound that's audible to a very long distance, at least a kilometer, I would say. Is this the only rock in the world which rings like a bell? That's not true. Um, there are several ringing rocks around the world. There is one in Pennsylvania I have visited and it has a, a lot of rocks and all of them are ringing rocks. Uh, these are technically called sonorous rocks in geology. A king who lived nearby wanted this rock in his palace. So he basically ordered his people to, to bring the rock over there, which they did. So this rock was transported to his palace. And to his surprise, when they struck this rock in his palace, it did not give a ringing tone. And of course, the king was really confused that it did not make that ringing noise in his palace. But when they really transported this rock back and put it here, it started to ring again like a bell. Now, this is why people think this is a very mysterious rock. You know, it was given to us by the gods. Now, of course, it sounds like a superstitious fairy tale. But in Pennsylvania, in the Ringing Rock Park, you know, people try to pocket these small rocks which are ringing, go to their house, and they try to use it and try to reproduce a ringing sound. It does not work. There is something very weird about these specific rocks, you know. It, it appears as though the rocks need to be in their own place to make this ringing sound. So the question is, why did the king ask his people to bring this gigantic rock to his palace just so he could hear the ringing sound? No, ancient Indians used these sonorous rocks for a specific reason. They would basically lie down on it and somebody would tap on the edges and this procedure would continue for hours. They believed that this would heal their body and their consciousness. Now, today in modern technology, we also have something called sound therapy, which is exactly the same. Now, is it possible that ancient people were technologically much more advanced? They were creating a healing bed to help people who are sick. Now, of course, the most important question is that is this a natural formation or was it created by artificial means? If it's a natural formation, you would expect that all these rocks would make a similar at least, or at least a feeble ringing sound, but that doesn't happen. This is the only rock which has this ringing tone and the rest of the rocks don't. And there is also something, some other difference. Now, if you look at this rock face, you can see a lot of differences here. You know, it's not flat, but if you look at this plane, it looks as though somebody has worked on this rock, you know, making it flat. We don't know if there was some kind of a process that went into this to make this into a ringing rock. 
And this is why people call it the Shiva's musical instrument. Now, what do locals think about this? Do they believe that this is a natural formation or they think this was made by artificial means? Locals believe that this is a result of a volcanic eruption. And there is a temple nearby which has a lot of lingams which are supposedly made out of volcanic lava. And they believe that this was made, this was cast using that volcanic lava, which is essentially molten form of rock. Now, this might be a twisted version of saying, well, we, we were basically melting this rock and adding certain elements and making this into a ringing rock. Now, today is it possible to make something like this? Yes, today we have furnaces and we have equipment that's, that can really melt rock and I can basically pour molten iron or copper and then mix it up to make it into a ringing rock. Now we don't know if that was the case here. In 1965 in Pennsylvania, a group of scientists went into this ringing rock state park and they tried to find out why these rocks were capable of making this sound. Now, of course, they crushed the rocks, they sliced them, they tried to understand the chemical properties of them, but they could not just find out why some rocks are capable of giving out this ringing tone. Of course, we definitely have to talk about extraterrestrials. Did extraterrestrials play a part in creating these type of rocks. Do these rocks emit some kind of strange energy? And this is exactly what we're going to find. We have something called a ghost meter and it's capable of detecting this type of energy. So we're going to test it here. So this is the EMF meter, uh, most, uh, mostly called the ghost meter because it's capable of detecting even very small milligauss okay the scale is essentially from zero to five milligauss so it can even detect very small amount of emf and we want to find out if this rock is emitting some kind of emf let's see I don't see anything, to be honest with you. I don't see any changes at all. There doesn't seem to be any kind of EMF that's coming out of this rock. Let me try again. No, no. And I do firmly believe that even though there is no EMF on this equipment I see, there would be some other kind of energy that I'm not able to detect with this gadget. Okay guys, I've come down and you've seen the musical instrument of Lord Shiva, but I'm gonna show you something completely different in the next video. Stay tuned, I will talk to you soon, bye. I hope you like this video, I'm Praveen Mohan, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and also click on the bell button to get all these updates. Please give this video a thumbs up and do share it with your friends. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.